Good morning. Good morning. Labrid. Labrid. Uh, thank you for coming uh, this morning to the interview. We just mentioned that European Commission has approved 45 million euros uh, as Latvia's support for Air Baltic. Uh, this is due to the, to the damage suffered by the restrictions of pandemic on February 24. The Russia start, uh, started uh, the war in Ukraine. Uh, so the Air Baltic cannot fly over these countries now. What is the current geopolitical situation and impact on the aviation industry? So geopolitical situation is unchanged. The Russian airspace is closed and we have uh, to take longer ways around this airspace. Um, but the aviation industry in Europe now uh, sees a boom. So we have uh, a, a lot of capacity out there. But the airports, not, not Riga, but the European airports have problems dealing with, with the demand, with the very strong demand. So we have come out of COVID and it looks like that everybody wants to fly. Uh, and that situation causes uh, a lot of problems in Europe for the aviation sector. We have delays at the airport, uh, and that causes, of course, that the passengers arrive with delays. So that, that is a big issue. It's, it's positive because we are back in flying, but uh, the impact of the war to the European aviation uh, has been offset by, by more flying now. Yes, not only everybody wants to fly, but uh, a lot of people are going on strikes in airports, in airlines across uh, Europe. Uh, is it affecting Air Baltic also? Yes, it is affecting us. We don't have strikes in Riga or at our airline, so that is very good. But uh, whenever there is a strike in Amsterdam, in Frankfurt, in Brussels, uh, we fly there and then we can, the baggage is not loaded or there is uh, security lines long. Then we have a delay, we return to Riga, but then we still have the delay and for the whole day the aircraft is delayed and uh, it is at the moment very difficult because all of Europe has these issues with the staff and the strikes. But still, Air Baltic is, is flying mm -hmm. and we try to do our best to arrive again on time and we, we already tell passengers in advance that that is happening. But it is a situation which we uh, from Riga cannot fix because it's a European problem. Uh, at the moment, when Baltic went to the government for this financial support, uh, it was clear that the company's shares would be listed on the stock exchange. When it will be and what will it mean for Latvia and also for the Air Baltic? The plan is to do this uh, now earliest in 2024 because we need to show to the financial world, first of all, that we are producing profits again. This will not be this year. This will be earliest next year. And then in 2024, we would take the airline to the stock exchange at uh, Riga Nasdaq, but also at an international stock exchange because of the size of Air Baltic. Our size, when we go to the stock exchange, will be the largest, which has been done in the Baltics. And therefore, we need to co-list also at another stock exchange. So at the moment, your prognosis is that next year, Air Baltic will be working with profit? Um, let's say we have to see what this winter does. Uh, we are seeing now the results are going in this direction, but it's very difficult with the current situation. What is happening in the Ukraine? How do we go through the winter and COVID? I give this statement uh, next year, uh, but we are, of course, we want to go back to profit as soon as we can. Uh, at the moment, uh, what is the financial situation for Air Baltic? We are forecasting for this year because it's, it started very difficult, uh, still a significant loss. Uh, but we are at the moment, right now in these months, having better results than expected. So now we are flying profitable, but normally in the summer the airline is making a profit. How significant will be the loss? We, we do not give a forecast because it's not possible yet, but it is still a loss in the expectation of, of what we have planned in the business plan, in the new business plan. And uh, at the moment we are doing a little bit better in these summer months because of a lot of demand but I cannot forecast what is happening towards the winter. On the fe February 24, the Russia started uh, the war in Ukraine. Uh, as you said, uh, it means uh, you have to fly to certain destinations much longer. Uh, what is the impact and how safe now is to fly uh, to the east? There's no problem because we are not flying anywhere where there is a conflict zone. So that we are flying everywhere, but we are not flying over the territory which is um, um, closed. Uh, it, so it's safe to fly. But we have, on some of the flights, we have a significant longer flight time and that costs more fuel and therefore the cost for us is higher. Um, and that is, but we have planned that in now. So when it started, uh, the situation was there and now we have offset a lot of the flying going more. We have more routes than we ever had before, uh, 99 routes. Now we just opened a new one for the winter, Marrakesh. So we are do, uh, offsetting the impact of the war. 
fuel prices are hitting one record after another, sadly. And uh, how much is it affecting uh, the ticket prices for Air Baltic at the moment? Uh, it is not affecting the ticket prices immediately, but when the fuel prices stay this high over a long time, then all airlines will uh, have to go up on the, on the ticket prices. But you cannot immediately increase the ticket prices because the passengers which are flying today booked their ticket uh, in the past. The fuel price uh, is depending on the oil price for us, uh, and uh, it is expected that the oil price uh, continues now to go down again a little bit because of the of the world going uh, into a more difficult situation. So, but it's still uh, at the moment three times as high as it was two years ago. So it's a very significant cost for us as an airline. Does it mean that uh, ticket prices at some moment could be three times higher than it was uh, two years ago? No, never, n <laughs> never. So hi the, the the higher ticket prices. Um, we still have the uh, 19 euro 90 ticket, uh, the green sale actually this week, and you find these tickets. But if we talk about higher ticket prices, then long term. But everybody is booking his ticket differently. So you will still have 19, 90 euros, but you also have uh, tickets for several hundred euros. Due to the lack of aircraft parts, Air Baltic will cancel flights uh, to separate destinations from Riga and Vilnius in autumn, uh, four destinations from Vilnius and three from uh, Riga. Is it possible that other flights uh, could be closed? Uh, we have decided, to, because of the situation of not having all of our aircraft available for us, that we take out some flights, so it's a small number. Uh, the destinations uh, were selected and we do this well in advance to fly the flights we want to fly on time, so that, that's the reason. But it's a ver very small number compared to the total production, and it is something airlines regularly do. If we look at our competitors, they're taking out thousands of flights, and, and we just now, already knowing that we will not have all the aircraft available to fly in September, we took out some flights now. But at the moment, there are uh, also some aircraft that are not available for Air Baltic due to the lack of uh, the uh, details? Uh, we have the, the issue we have, all industry has, that spare parts. So uh, our aircraft uh, goes into maintenance and for that you, you replace certain parts. And currently we have seven aircraft sitting in Riga where we are waiting for the parts to come. Mm -hmm. And the next aircraft which come for maintenance will also have to wait. And in our forecast now, because the spare parts are not coming, uh, they are coming from all over the world, we have to either take another aircraft in to fly for us, that's what we do, to fly our flights, uh, or we, we consolidate the flights, and that's what we did, to make sure that we can transport all the passengers which have booked a ticket. What well, do uh, will there be more than uh, seven aircraft that are not available for flights? It's, it's rotating, so some days we have less, some days we have more. It depends on uh, when, when the spare parts arrive. Sometimes we are waiting several weeks for a specific part. Um, it's new aircraft, so we have new aircraft standing there, but at the same time we are also getting new aircraft from the factory. So sometimes you, you put one relatively new aircraft on the ground, and the next day you already get a brand new aircraft from the factory, because we, we have now 36 Airbuses, we get another four this year, so we have 40 Airbuses, but some of them already have to go for maintenance, and then if the parts are not coming, uh, they, they, there's nothing we can do. Um, of course, we ask for the money uh, because of the delay from the manufacturers of the parts, but that is happening later. But these cancelled flights can be resumed when? The, we, we will make sure that when somebody has a ticket, that he is flying. So this is the most important. Somebody buys a ticket, he wants to fly. But if we know already in two or three months from now that we will not have sufficient aircraft, then we try to bring, uh, reduce and rebook the passenger early so that they not, not come on the day and then the flight is not happening. You mentioned earlier that it looks like everybody is flying at the moment. So how many passengers has uh, Air uh, Baltic had up till now? We had already around 1.3 million passengers this year, and l last week we had a new record. We transported 86,000 passengers on Air Baltic network, but we're also flying for the Lufthansa Group with 11 aircraft and, and SAS, and we carried another 30. So we nearly had 130,000 passengers last week transported by Air Baltic. That is a number we have not seen before. So Air Baltic is now larger in production than ever before, but not all of it is the production of Air Baltic because we fly also for other airlines, but total production is, is larger than before. Uh, just remind us, how does it compare with uh, pre-pandemic era? Um, it's about 350% higher passenger numbers. Uh, to the pre-pandemic area, we are still at around 80%. 
but if we compare to last year, we are 350% up. So it's, uh, it, it's for us also surprising. We did not expect so much passengers. You just mentioned the pre-pandemic uh, time, but uh, people now are flying more or less without uh, pandemic restrictions. Uh, will you be ready if the pandemic hits again in, in autumn? The airlines were always ready. We were the ones uh, who were dealing with it very well. Uh, the governments have to be ready in Europe not to create again the situation we had. That's all. Of course, we are ready to deal with any pandemic as, as we were before, but we were restricted by very uh, individual rules of different governments. I hope if there is a pandemic coming that the governments in Europe have a coordinated approach and then flying, uh, as we see now, is something which can happen uh, with them. Now we fly without mask. If a pandemic come back, I, I would say, yeah, yeah, you have a mask again. But we will, we will hopefully never be stopped again to fly and connect people because we see how much that is important for the world. And by the way, the competition in uh, Riga airport is growing. Uh, more routes, more companies operating. So. How is uh, Airbotic doing in this competition uh, situation? We do not have our hub in full function back because we are not flying to the east, so that is uh, unfortunate. Uh, therefore, our market share is around 50%. It has reduced a little bit, but we are very happy because we have um, taken the risks also out. We're also flying from Tampere, from Vilnius, from Tallinn, uh, and we fly for other airlines. So we make sure that, that we continue to grow but uh, the competition, of course, in Europe is there and will, will be there. But with uh, being the largest airline in the Baltic states, we are still happy. 99 routes now for Airbot, okay, and the new one, Marrakesh, in autumn. So yes. 100. Uh, it would be the hundreds, <laughs> but then in winter some will go. But yeah, we have one, one more route coming, a very long one, which is not announced yet, because we're waiting for the slots for that. But we will hopefully soon announce. And to even, the east or to the west? Uh, it goes <laughs> south. To the north. It goes <laughs> south, <laughs> south, and it's longer than Marrakesh, but we can't say yet. So it's because Africa. We, let, let's yeah. see when it, uh, when it comes out. It's but we, we have that as a leisure destination. Uh, Marrakesh, actually, the passengers are really booking Marrakesh. It's a very successful start of the first African route of Air Baltic. And uh, so we hopefully can also open soon the bookings for the next long route for the winter. So it's longer than five hours and a half, yes. like Marrakesh is. Yes. Okay, we will follow the news. And, and good luck with getting a spare aircraft. Yes, uh, we are working with Airbus and Pratt and & Whitney on solving the issue. Maybe for the... Second route to Africa? Uh, wait, no, it's, it's, uh, le le let's wait until we have the slots and then we can announce. Okay, we can wait. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming this morning. Thank, Thank you. you.